All right, uh, in this video we're going to just talk about exponent rules and how to work with them. Now, there's lots of different ways to think about it, so I'm going to do these a couple of different ways each. Now, the first example here is a classic example of product rule. And the product rule simply just states that if you have two things with the same base, and these assuming that you know A is not zero because that could be bad if everything was zeroed out, uh, if you have something with the same base, uh, but di perhaps different exponents do not have to be different, but perhaps they are. Then you just simply add the exponents when you multiply them. So what we're going to do here is we can just simply add all these up. So because x is the base of each one of these, this is x to the third plus 2 plus negative 1. And if you work through this, this is 3 plus 2 is 5, plus negative 1 is 4, so this would be x to the fourth. Another way to do this, uh, in, in typically the way that I, I tend to attack it, the negative sign says it flips down below. So because all of these are assumed to be on top unless otherwise told, uh, this would be x to the third times x squared, and then underneath would be just x. Well, that's x to the fifth over x, and then I ask myself the question of, I have five x's on top, I have one on the bottom. How many are left, because they cancel one for one, and where are they? Well, as it turns out, there's going to be one canceling up top with the one down below. That's going to leave us four up top. So this is just going to be x to the fourth, which, again, it's the same answer. So it just depends on how you think about it. All right, so for another one that's somewhat similar. Uh, whenever you're dealing with letters and numbers in the same expression, you can go ahead and separate that and only deal with them separately. This is kind of working with that whole idea of multiplication of fractions, where the fraction said if you have a over b times c over d, then you just simply multiply straight across. Well, OK, not only can you do that, but you can also, in a sense, decompose it. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with decomposition of fractions, this is not precisely the same thing. Um, but you can factor it out, if you will, back into its constituents. We're using that property here to factor this out into its constituents. So we really have negative 8 over 4. And then we have this y to the fourth over y squared. So negative 8 over 4 is going to be a negative 4. But it's going to be on the top. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe we should try actually answering the question correctly. Uh, negative 8 over 4 <laughs> is negative 2. But because there were more on top than on bottom, then the 2 is going to be on top. So over here, with the 4 y's and the 2 y's, for each y on top and bottom, they cancel one, out, one another out and make 1. So there's a couple of different ways, again, that you can do this. One way is to use what's known as the quotient rule. If you use this, all of your answers come onto the top. If they happen to be a negative exponent, then they flip to the bottom. And that simply says that if you have two things with the same base, you can subtract their exponents. All right, so for that, then, uh, y to the fourth over y squared is equal to y to the four minus two, which is just y squared. So combining both our numerical answer and our letter answer or our variable answer we get negative 2y squared and that's the final answer. Over here again I have a slightly different way of thinking about it. I actually use the, ca the, the canceling so I have 4y's on top, 2y's on the bottom, that leaves me 2 left and they're on top and that's how I would get this. But you know to each his own. So that's really how you're working with these. It, there's oodles and oodles and oodles of different ways you can combine the exponent rules. So just look for a way that makes the most sense to you. I hope this helped.